Ah, that's better. I knew there was a reason for that, and I wasn't getting it. Chirpy, the parakeet, never saw it coming. One second, he was peacefully perched in his cage. The next, he was sucked in, washed up, and blown over. The problem began when Chirpy's owner decided to clean the Chirpy's cage with a vacuum cleaner. She removed the attachment from the end of the hose, sucked it in the cage, stuck it in the cage, the phone rang, and she turned to pick it up. She barely said hello when whew, Chirpy was sucked in. The bird owner gasped, put down the phone, turned off the vacuum, and opened up the bag, and there was Chirpy, still alive, but stunned. Since the bird was covered with dust and soot, she grabbed him and, and raced to the bathroom, turned on the faucet, and held Chirpy under the running water. Then realizing that Chirpy was soaking wet and shivering, she did what any compassionate bird owner would do. She reached for the hairdryer, <laughs> blasted the pet with the hot air. Poor Chirpy never knew what hit him. A few days after the trauma, the, a reporter who had initially written about the event contacted Chirpy's owner to see how the bird was recovering. Well, she replied, Chirpy doesn't sing much anymore. He just sits and stares. It's hard not to see why Chirpy, why, sucked in, washed up, and blown over. That's enough to steal a song from the stoutest heart. Is that true? You ever, you ever been in like that? You ever been in, felt like maybe this week you'd been sucked up and, and blown away and, and, and washed over or whatever that was it said? And have you ever felt like that? I felt like that sometimes. I have. You want to tell you something? And if I had Chirpy and it had been me and I'd been the owner, I'd say, press through, Chirpy. Just press through. You can do it. This morning, I want to turn tonight, I want to tell you that. I want to say, just press through. Because you as a Christian, you're going to be have days like that. You're going to be against some things that are going to be pretty tough sometime. And you're going to feel about like Chirpy. You're going to wonder what hit you. Or maybe you're like this. A friend of mine woke up one morning to find a puddle of water in the middle of his king-size water bed. <laughs> in order to fix the puncture, he rolled the heavy mattress outdoors and filled it and filled it with more water so he could locate the leak more easily. The enormous bag of water was impossible to control and began rolling up, rolling on a hilly terrain. He tried to hold it back, but it headed downhill and landed in a clump of brush, which poked it full of holes. Disgusted, my friend threw out the water bag frame and moved a standard bed into his bedroom. The next morning, he awoke to find a puddle of water in the middle of his new bed. No, it's not what you thought. The upstairs bedroom had a leaky drain. Can you imagine? Maybe you've had a day like that. You thought you were doing the right thing and everything was going to work out. All of a sudden, you made a worse mess of where you were. I want to read to you this morning, or tonight, I'm still, I'm still here this morning. I want to read to you tonight about a woman who pressed through who pressed through. And we can learn a lot from her. A certain woman who had an issue of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had. There's that word all again. You know, I've noticed that it's been amazing since I've been thinking about all, how many times in the Bible it says all. But she pressed, let me see, where am I? 12 years had suffered many things from many physicians and spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. Pretty tough place, isn't it? When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the plague. And Jesus immediately knowing in, his, in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned, 
turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitudes thronging thee. See, he had a large group. He had just come in. There was a large group around him. And you can see how, how she was having to press through just to even touch, touch his garment. It says in one version, touch the hem of his garment. She had to go through the press. She had to go through a lot of things. And it says, He looked around about to see her, and that had done this, her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done to her, came and fell down on him, and he told all the truth, and told him all the truth. So here we have a woman that was in a pretty dark place, in a pretty rough place. <coughs> and it says that she pressed through. And that's what we, we need to do. We as Christians, we're going to be up. And, and I think sometimes when, when people become Christians, we think that everything's going to work out just right. And we're just, things just going to be sweet. Everything's going to be good. And, you know, it is pretty exciting when you get saved. And you don't, you don't feel all that pressure. You just feel God's grace has blessed you. Your life has been changed. But then you get in the warfare and you get in the battle zone and then you get in the reality of what it is to really be a Christian. Well, you know, we can still have that joy and we can still, in the midst of the battle, we can still have that victory and realize that it's just, but we're going to have to press through some things. And she had to press through those. Let's look at tonight what I want to do. I want to look at some ways or things that she had to press through. The first thing is, I believe she had to press through maybe attitudes. Hmm. Attitudes. You know, when you're in the press and when there's a lot of a pressure on something, sometimes attitudes pop out, right? Have you ever been in a pressure situation and, and all of a sudden different by, everybody thinks they know how it ought to work out or what needs to be done or, or, or there's disagreement and stuff, but attitudes get in the way. Maybe it was her attitude. Maybe it was her atti attitude. It says that she had suffered many things by many physicians. Many things by many physicians. Sometimes it's we have attitudes because of what we had, have had to suffer because of other people. And we have to overcome, we have to press through those attitudes. I believe that's a part of our spiritual growth, is to learn to press through certain things that we get on us and not let them attach themselves in our process of thinking, our mind, in our heart, and, and dwell on us. Have you ever gotten just such a place? I have. Have you ever gotten such a place over something, maybe something somebody's done for you, uh, against you, or, or done to you, or, or something that they've said, and it just gets on you so much you just can't get it off your mind? I mean, you wake up at the night in the night and stuff, and you, you're thinking about it, and you you get up in the morning and you just have this uh, just on you, and it goes over and over, and you wrestle in your mind, and you think of things that you need to say to them, and, and you think of things that you think they say, might be saying to you or, or saying about you, and it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Maybe she had to press through some of these things, and we as Christians, I believe, we have to press through some of our attitudes, attitudes, maybe feelings that we have uh, toward other people that have done us wrong. You know, the, the attitudes, are we might even call them wrinkles in our life. In Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verse 27, it says, it's talking about, uh, it says that he might present to himself a glorious church. There's wrinkles, there's things, there's, there's attitudes, there's things that we have to press through that we might be a glorious church. Not having a spot or a wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The church, the body of Christ. We have to, you know, if you have a wrinkle in your blouse or in your shirt or in your pants what do you do you press it you ever get your iron out or your wife presses it there you press it when we got married that was one of the things that was in our written agreement it really wasn't written it was just written verbally but in our agreement was I iron my clothes she didn't argue with me I don't know why 
But I like the w- certain way that I would iron my clothes. I used to even iron my jeans, you know, put the crease in the front and stuff. And I just like to do iron clothes. And I would do it anymore. You don't have to, do you? For two reasons. First of all, you have permanent press. The other one is people don't iron them. You just wear them wrinkled, right? And that's a new look. <laughs> but anyway, but, but I think there are, are wrinkles and, and we have to, those wrinkles could be like a, a, an attitude. We have to press through. We have to push. We have to press. There's work that we have to do. We have to press to get those attitudes out of our mind. Also, something else she had to press through were attitudes, were attitudes of other people. Not just her attitude toward other people, but also other people's maybe attitude toward her. There were people standing there by her. Can you see, uh, in my mind, I've always just pictured, it doesn't really say how she touched the hem of of his garment, but you think about it. She she wasn't, I don't believe she was standing up here to to get down here and touch the hem of his garment. I believe her weakness and and the way she was, she was actually down on the ground crawling, I feel like, because of her her, her strength, her, her, her weakness, but also to get down there because she knew if she could just touch that garment, she was going to be healed. That's all she had to do was just touch it. And can you see her pushing through? She might push through and some grab some man's leg and he just, what are you doing grabbing my leg? Uh, just, you know, he, he, people getting upset. Well, I, I was here first. You ever try to get in line? You ever try to get in line and somebody just push you in front of you? Well, how do you feel? Hey, I was here first. Maybe that's what, somebody's laughing here. Somebody's been in this line before, huh? Which were you? Were you the one pushing or were you the one being pushed? Do what? You went on by and sat down. You just let them have it, huh? Sometimes that's what we have to do. But attitudes, attitudes of other people, uh, uh, they were following Jesus. What, what about Jairus? You see, right before she touched the hem of his garment, what happened? Jairus came to her, and he said, what did he say to her? I have this daughter who is sick unto death. And she could, you know, she could have been dead right then. But she's dying, and I need you to come because if you'll pray her, she'll be healed. If you'll touch her, she'll be healed. Well, here, he, they're heading, they're on their way to go. There, there's this daughter, she's in need, she's dying. I wonder how Jairus felt when Jesus stopped And he turned around and he said, who touched me? I'm sure Jairus might have said, okay, who was it? Who touched him? Leave him alone. Let him come on. My daughter needs help. You see, sometimes attitudes of other people, sometimes their attitude is because they don't understand what's going on. And we have to consider the attitude of other people. Why why do they have the attitude they have? Maybe there's something wrong for them. Maybe theirs is even more serious than what ours is. First Corinthians, you know, we're talking about attitudes. First Corinthians 13, which is one of my favorite chapters, because I believe if you get love, if you get agape love, if you get this love that Christ had, the love like God, love like Christ, you'll get everything else. You'll get the holiness you'll get the righteousness, you'll get the heart purity, all that things. If you can just get that kind of love, if we can get that kind of love in our heart. But it says in there, love thinketh no evil. That's an attitude. Love thinketh no evil. It doesn't think evil things against. And that's what we do. We think evil things. Our attitudes are evil thoughts toward other people because of what they've done to us or how they've treated us. Hmm. Attitudes. Other people. Love almost refuses to be insulted or to be hurt. Boy, if you measure love by that, that, that's tough, isn't it? I'm not going to let that hurt me. I'm not going to let that affect me this way. You see, our life is to be spiritually disciplined. And there's things like that we have to be aware of and try to fight that the best we can. God will help you. If you try to overcome certain attitudes or attitudes of other people. It'll be hard. It won't be easy. But you know what? If you'll work at it and you put your effort forth, God will help you. He will help you as a matter turn around to the point that that attitude will even turn into love. 
and you'll see the heart of that person and maybe see the intent of that person and see why they're the way they are. Maybe they haven't been taught like you. Hardly even notices when others do wrong. I heard a, a man of God say one time, he said, you ought to love in a way that you don't know you have any enemies. Hmm, that's heavy. Love in a way that you don't know you have any enemies. You don't think of anyone as your enemy. You just love them all. Love. Okay, so she had to, to press through added an attitude also she had to press through suffering suffering she didn't feel like what she was doing all these times she had gone to the doctor she didn't feel like going to the does anybody here enjoy going to the doctor anybody feel like going anybody want to go to the doctor tonight no i don't i don't sometimes we have to sometimes it is a necessity but, but sometimes suffering, we, we, we have to press through suffering. There's a lot of different kinds of suffering. Hurt is a suffering. We have to press through when we've been hurt. We have to press through when we've been done wrong. We have to press through a lot of different things. But we have to sometimes press through even physical suffering. I... Uh, don't like to single people out when I'm in service because I think the devil uses that sometimes. But sometimes I think it's in order, and I'm going to do that tonight. But I have great respect for someone here because of how they press. How they press. How they press when they don't feel good. How they press to come when they hurt. Anyone like to guess who it is? Who? Well, isn't that amazing? He presses. He presses to come when he doesn't feel like it. Lee is who everyone says. He presses to come. You know why? Because he loves God's people. He loves Jesus. He loves this church. I mean, he's made that obvious. He said it. He comes... Uh, he's been in the hospital, out of surgery. He, I'll be there Wednesday night. I'll be there. I'll be there Sunday night because I'm supposed to sing. Press, press past feeling, and I'm sure there's others here that that come when they don't feel good. Or I'm not saying don't come here when you got a virus and you're going to give it to everybody else. I don't know what I'm talking about. But I think there are times that we can we can press beyond uh, certain things that we just give in to. Where, you know, what if this woman hadn't pressed past her suffering? What if she hadn't pressed past her disappointment in the past? What if she hadn't have pressed? What if she hadn't have gone one more time and reached out one more time? She'd reached out to a lot of people, but she pressed past other people's failures, disappointments and even failures herself saying well I failed I've gone here I've gone here I've gone here. I don't have anything left Jesus one more time I'm gonna reach out pressed so she pressed through her suffering I believe she actually had to crawl on the ground it says that Jesus knew he was aware we read it he was aware when she touched that garment why was he aware? I believe it was because his strength went from him. The strength that, that it, he had within him, that entered into her body, and that's where the healing came, and it gave her strength. And he felt that. He felt that. But she pressed past suffering. I believe many have missed blessings because they didn't, they didn't press past the feel like it. Feeling like it sometimes is not just a physical thing, but it's a mental thing. It's a, our process of thinking. It's our patterns sometimes we've learned in life. I don't like taking the trash out. I don't. I still don't like I didn't like to do it when I was a kid. My mom made me, and that's probably why I don't like it. 
is because I was always made to take the trash. I hated the smell. I, I just didn't want to have to walk all that way and take that can out, but I did it. I did it. Some things we have to do that we don't like even, but God has to help us. Suffering. The third thing, she had to press through her weaknesses, her limitations. You know, if we look at our weaknesses and if we look at our limitations enough, we really become worse than we are. We dwell on them. We even look at sometimes our spiritual weaknesses. And if you think about it enough, you can pretty well defeat yourself, can't you? It's like this guy, he didn't feel real good, and he went to the doctor's office. And he went in, and he sat down in a chair. And you know how the doctor's office is? They, they have the chairs, and you sit there. And he picked up the paper over here, and he starts reading the paper. And all of a sudden, this lady comes in and sits down. And she sits right beside him. And she starts... <coughs> Guess what? This guy here, all of a sudden, he goes... <coughs> <coughs> and you got... <coughs> you see what I'm saying? Well, the doctor calls her and she goes in. Well, he sits there. He's, <coughs> you know. And all of a sudden, in walks another door, opens up, and in walks another patient and sits down beside him. Sits down here and he's, he's sitting over here in, in, in the chair. And he's over, <coughs> and this lady's, this man's sitting there. And, and he goes, oh, oh, oh. He's sitting over here, and he's going. <coughs> oh. 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 This other lady comes in, and she comes in, and, and, and she sits down, and he's sitting here, and he's going, oh. And he looks over at her, and she's pregnant. <laughs> you know, that's the way we are. We, we get in our minds. That's a, you know, that happens in life. People actually, uh, that's the way they are. But we're also, I think sometimes a lot of things, uh, we, we, we limit ourselves, and we create the cell, things in our own mind that make us weaker than we really are. We're not trusting God. We're leaning on our own understanding and not, not on, on, on Him, having faith in Him and trusting Him. Ephesians 5, 27 says, that you might present Him a glorious church, not having spot, wrinkle of anything, but that you may be holy and without blemish. Joel says, Joel three ten. it says, let the weakling say, I am strong. The prophet Joel, he says, let the weakling say, I am strong. That's what we have to do. We have to convince ourselves, I'm strong. I'm strong in the Lord. I can go beyond my weaknesses. I don't have this ability to say, I can't do this. You're right. David, couldn't, David, a young boy, couldn't kill a big giant either, could he? But he knew God working in him, and that anointing on him could do that. And that's good. It's good that we know we can't do a whole lot within ourselves, but we need to know that we serve a God who can do something through us if we'll allow him. 2 Corinthians 12, 10 says, that is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, I am strong. Tonight, I want to leave you with this word. It's a short sermon. You can't believe it, can you? Press through. Press through. Press through all those things. Press through your own weaknesses. 
Press through your attitude. Press through the things you have to suffer. Believe in God. Trust Him because He's on your side. And He'll teach you through those things and He'll work through those things to show you things about yourself and help you grow in the Lord. Let's stand.